The next container type we want to learn about is the tuple. Tuples are widely used internally in many of the systems that we depend upon, like databases. Tuples are very much like lists. They hold data in the order we supply it. And we can access the elements inside a tuple with an index. However, the similarities end there. Tuples are easier to process and more memory efficient than lists. Tuples are also immutable, which means that we can't add or remove elements from them. This is powerful because we can use them to ensure that our data is not altered. We can create tuples by pairing up elements. Finally, we can use something called tuple unpacking to expand a tuple into name variables that represent each element of the tuple. Let's explore these features. Often we'll have lists where we want to match up elements into pairs, and the zip function enables us to do that. Here I've got a list for the most popular cookies in the US and India, and I want to build a list of pairs by the popularity rank of the cookie in each country. I'll pass them to the zip function. Then I can print the result of my zip, and you can see I have what looks like a list of tuples. It's really an iterator, but that's for a different course. Notice that the tuples use the parentheses as their object representation. Now let's look at how we can use unpacking with a tuple. Tuple unpacking, also sometimes called tuple expansion, allows us to assign the elements of a tuple to name variables for later use. This syntax allows us to create more readable, less error-prone code. Here I have a tuple containing the top-ranked cookie from both countries, and I want to store them as usnum1 and innum1 so that I can print them by name. I start by putting both variables as the target of an assignment statement, separated by a comma. Then I assign the first tuple and I'll top pairs list to them. Let's look at another great use case for tuple unpacking. For me, the place I use tuple unpacking the most is when working with loops. We can use tuple unpacking when declaring the for loop to separate a list of tuples into their elements as we loop over them. This sounds a bit strange, but let's take a look at it. Here I'm building a for loop that uses tuple unpacking when iterating over the top pairs list. It splits each tuple in the list into its Indian and US cookie elements. We then use each of these variables to print the cookies in order. Another use of tuple unpacking helps us keep track of which element in the iterable or list we are currently working on. Often we want to know what the index is of an element in the iterable. The enumerate function enables us to do that by creating tuples where the first element of the tuple is the index of the element in the original list, and then the element itself is the second. We can use this to track rankings in our data or skip elements we're not interested in. Here I'm going to enumerate our top pairs list and split that into the resulting tuple into index and item. I can also use tuple unpacking on the item to get all three components separately. This can be exceptionally powerful. Let's look at a bit of responsibility that comes with this power. When we are creating tuples, we can make them with a zip or enumerate or use the parentheses as shown here. However, the real magic for creating a tuple in Python is the comma. If we accidentally end an assignment line with a comma, we can create a tuple. And this can have some very undesirable side effects further down in our code. So keep this in mind if you get a tuple where you don't expect it.